So please join us. It's coming up next right here on Good Morning Houston. Stay with us. I'm leaving up the uh, toilet seat so she's never ready on time. Houstonians speak out. Some parents are finding it's not that easy teaching kids values. Today, expert advice on self-reliance and potential. Well, that's all coming up next on Good Morning Houston. Stay with us. Just get some, you say, don't you think you should get your hair cut? Or you've been putting on weight lately? Well, if you leave the toilet seat up, uh, they get pretty mad. I just start being really sarcastic. And they really hate that. Changing your mind the opposite of what she says, just to make her mad. If I want to aggravate my wife, a woman, I'd probably be uh, very late after I have told her what time I'm going to be home. Keep the TV on at night. <laughs> oh, boy. The list can be long. Good morning. I'm Lisa Trapani. I'm Don Olson. Good morning. And, and I'm Doug Brown, here to give my opinion. Well, let's go, Doug. We'll start with you. I what is it that you could do to really aggravate? Well, this is not really bad, but I think it's the inability to follow directions. <laughs> you know, like you say, I want you to, to go north three miles, then turn west, and, I'll, and right away... This oh, is wait what aggravates you. Right, it aggravates me. For example, right. do you know where north is from here? It's north of here. <laughs> yeah, it's north, Doug. <laughs> okay. No, you know I, I operate small. on left and right. Don't give me that north-south stuff. That's a small yeah. point. That's small good. Point. And did you say you had another one? Well... I think maybe nagging would be so high on the list. I just would be one of how many of you guys, right? Yes, nagging. Whoa, wait a minute now. Equal time, equal time here because we have a few left too. Let's get to them. What do you say? Wait a minute. Go ahead. I didn't ask you yours. I know. Let me back up. Don't you hate that when women don't ask you your opinion? I'm sorry. What did you say? What is it that aggravates you most? What? What are you talking about? What is it about a woman that aggravates you the most? Oh, I thought you were trying to ask me what, how I can aggravate a woman. Okay, or pick it, either way. What are we talking about? Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, you getting aggravated? You're aggravating me. <laughs> you oh, really good, are, Don. No. It's, it's a convenient hearing problem, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. it, it, you pick the moment when you should be paying attention, and for some reason, you don't hear them, right? All right, uh -huh. I want to show you this great book. It's a, by one of my favorite authors, uh, Why I Hate Him. I've read everything they've ever published. <laughs> <laughs> How to aggravate a woman every time. There's several things in here that's just sort of a list of things. Now, you were saying before I aggravated you. Well, I was asking you what aggravates you. Oh, I mean, you know women, how to aggravate women. women. women we think, have a list of yeah, people who can attest to You run that. into a woman and, uh -huh. and, or anyone, and they know everything there is to know about you in 10 seconds. You're, you guys are all alike. <laughs> How's that? I know you. Yeah. yeah. You're the, all the same, right? You get that. <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? For the uh, defense over here, do you find that really, as you have you dated a lot of men? No, not that many. Okay. <laughs> the ones that you date, right? do you find there are more things that are alike about them or more things that are different about them? I mean, as you get to know men, do you find they're alike? Most definitely. Uh -huh. Yeah. All different shapes and sizes of the same person underneath. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And what is it that aggravates you the most? Uh, okay. When you're first dating a guy and you're getting to know him and you're going out, he wants to spend all his time with you, and you spend a lot of time together. And then once you get them and you're in the relationship, they need their space, and they complain about you being too clingy <laughs> and stuff like that. That annoys me. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's wrong with that? What's <laughs> wrong? Because in the beginning, you want one thing, and then once you have the person, you know, it's like you take them for granted. Yeah. 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 We've met one like him. Yeah. We know one like that. All right, let's get another opinion here. Come here. Standing up. Single, married. Single. Single, mm -hmm. and you're a pulse of the maleness out there. Sports. Always on TV. Whether football, basketball, baseball, always on TV. He'll sit there and change it from one sports, one sports game to another. <laughs> Meanwhile, you'd like to have a conversation, right. watch a romantic movie, mm -hmm. and just forget about that. And his focus is on the TV. The his and he is right behind her, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume you're very good on sports questions, right? Uh, right. I, I don't suppose there's anything that aggravates you. Well, no, I mean, you know, that's what they make commercials for. Time for her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of commercials, before you see violence on this show, we'll be right back. Stay with us. 
all the time asking you where you've been, not believing you, even when they don't have any reason to. And just looking at you, whistling and chanting and things like that. Like, hey, baby, come here, sweetie, sweet thing. Oh, you're looking good. That's aggravating. <laughs> so they weren't clapping for the best response. We heard one during the break, right? The one that gets gets me. Women say, you'd be lost without me. That's like, right. How do you know I was lost? I mean, <laughs> where was I going? We're, we're talking about how to aggravate uh, someone from the opposite sex. And there's a book here, How to Aggravate a Woman, specifically every time. Mm -hmm. And we are going to now uh, speak to some people. The experts. Who, on the experts subjects. from the Houston Post. Uh, joining us are Bonnie Gangelhoff and Dave Kaplan, who write on... Women and men. Women and men. For the respective Houston Post. gender, right. Good the morning. Houston Post. Both Good morning. morning. I would assume that your columns, having read a few of them, sort of spark a little uh, interest from your readers. Is that correct? You get, you hear from people. We do. Yes. And they say you are on target mm -hmm. t just 100%. Yeah. The yeah. men tell you that anyway, David. Well, when I hear from the men. Uh -huh. But uh, you I say. usually hear from angry women. See. And they say. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, usually have some gripes, I would assume. Yeah, now and then. But uh, Bonnie and I go back and forth. Yeah. Well, what do the what do the women tell you? Give me an example. Oh, they might uh, they might tell me I'm just you know not speaking for you know if I'll make a point that they can't argue with they say well other men don't believe this though you know yeah. that I'm somehow yeah. off on one yeah. side. You're by yourself, standing yeah. alone out there. All right, now you have some things. We're gonna go to this. Yeah, I've got some gripes. All right, let's hear your gripes. Here. Okay, here's my first gripe about women. They're too critical of men, and they never stop to appreciate how wonderful we are. Ah, uh, yes. Bonnie, Bonnie, jump in, please. Am I right, guys? Please, Bonnie. Well, first of all, we do appreciate men. We just have a few little gripes. <laughs> <laughs> and first on my list here is something uh, somebody else already brought up in the audience, and that is um, we hate it when men channel surf and they take complete control of the remote. Mm -hmm. I mean, we want the remote, too. We, right. oh, we want to find our programs. <laughs> when we finally um, uh, wa are watching Murphy Brown, let's say, in the next minute, all of a sudden we're watching Monday Night Football. Mm -hmm. And we want Murphy Brown back now. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> God. So I would say we hate it when men channel surf and take complete control of the remote. Yeah. That's first on my list. Yeah, but Dave, surely there's others. Oh, yeah, I got one. <laughs> I hate it when you're with a woman and she turns to you and says, What are you thinking? <laughs> now, you know, it's not any of her business what I'm thinking. And furthermore, why can't she have her own interesting thoughts? Yeah. You know? See, <laughs> now, but why do women do that? Tell now, me, Bonnie. Okay, my theory on this right. is that sometimes it's so hard to drag information out of men mm -hmm. that we're looking and reaching for any kind of um, question like that. You know, like, what are you thinking? Um, what are your connect? thoughts? Yeah, a way to connect. And sometimes we get, and we ask a question and we'll get an answer like, yup, nope. <laughs> yup <laughs> and nope. Yup and nope. Yup and nope. Yeah. And that's just not very satisfying. You can satisfying. build a lot on yup and nope. Yeah, uh-huh. I that's mean, David, true. you have to admit that's true. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it my turn again? Yeah. Yes. Uh, how about when women say they're just looking for a man with a good sense of humor? Uh, right. Yeah. We all know that in reality, a woman is looking for a man with everything, He's, who's got everything. You know, like the Don Nelson type. Yeah. Right. yeah. And so what are the rest of us What's guys supposed to do? <laughs> See? The Don Nelson type, the yeah. real first original Mr. Man. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. I have two remotes. I'll have you know. <laughs> That's in case she's hiding one of her own that overrides my first one. <laughs> All right. Okay, Bonnie. Okay, this is, uh, my number two is one that also came up earlier. And this is um, when men, you, you may be out with a man at a restaurant, let's say, and a beautiful woman walks in, and the next thing you know, the guy's falling out of the chair, gawking <laughs> at her. And if he doesn't do that, he makes a comment about it. That drives women nuts. It drives us absolutely yeah. wild. Yeah. And, and you know what? That happens to every woman. Do you remember, yeah. Don, when we talked to I'm sorry, gorgeous, I wasn't paying gorgeous Cindy Crawford? Remember we talked to her mm -hmm. about that? And we asked uh -huh. her, you're in a restaurant. Cindy Crawford, okay? One of the 50 most beautiful people in the world. Mm -hmm. You're in a restaurant with your husband, Richard Gere, and a beautiful blonde, beautiful redhead walks in. Mm -hmm. Does he look? She says, yes. They all look. Now, you're married to Cindy Crawford. Are you still going to look? Apparently so, if you're Richard yeah. Gere. The list grows longer. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us.
just let everything go for a day and see how long they could get along without us. Go out and, and charge up too much on his credit card or something? Um, ignore them and just look away and totally ignore them, blow them off completely. I'd aggravate him by flirting with another guy or just doing something to take him off. There you go. What women would do to try to aggravate their man, can't live with them, can't live without them. Those things that drive us nuts, nuts about the opposite sex, that's what we're talking about with Dave Kaplan and Bonnie Gangelhoff, the Houston Post. They write about men and women. And I think, Bonnie, it was your turn. I'm positive it was your turn <laughs> to talk about I happen to what have one right here. Do you? Good. Take it away. Right, number three. Um, one thing that really can drive us wild is when a man says, oh, you're just jealous. Now, if you have a valid criticism of another, of another woman, for instance, you just don't like her. Suppose it's a friend of your husband's or whatever, and maybe she flirts with him. And maybe there, you just have this sixth sense about something about her you don't like, and, and you'll tell him that, and he'll say, oh, you're just jealous. And uh, that drives a lot of us. Whereas if he says something about another man, yeah. you never jump to that. Bonnie, can no. I ask you something? Remember when we were in the green room just before the show and I was saying what a wonderful host Lisa is and I started going to examples of her, her many talents and you told me to shut up and that, and that you were sick this is and not you were sick. Of, he does have a point. And, uh, uh, this is not true. No, I know not it's true. not true. Do you think that man coming up on Geraldo would say you're just jealous? That I mean, man on Geraldo has a longer <laughs> list than this. I got, I got to tell you. All right. Okay, okay, I've got one. And that's that women don't see food, they see calories. I mean, a waiter could come up with a tray full of sizzling fajitas and luscious fruit and tasty appetizers, and a man sees a tray and he goes, mmm, good. A woman looks at the same tray and her head instantly becomes a, a computer, a calorie counting computer. Do <laughs> you have anything to say about that? Bonnie? That's angry. Then, then this may be true. But, 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 <laughs> what about... Uh, the boring ball scores we have to listen to all the time. I mean, to us, men's heads sometimes seem like a computer of just Astro scores and rocket scores and, and Euler scores, yeah. and they reel off numbers after numbers until my head is reeling. But it's more interesting than the number of calories in mayonnaise, you've got to admit. Not to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> there are no playoffs in mayonnaise on mayonnaise. <laughs> okay. And it, keep going. Oh. I've got a housework one. I, I'm sure every woman here has some gripes about this and a lot of different ones, but here's one um, that, that I hear a lot and I know it's true, and that is a man will say he help, will help clean up and <clears throat> the next thing you know, the dishes have somehow gotten to the sink, but they haven't made their way to the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like they don't, they don't this see, happen in your house? They don't so see the big dish. Yes, yes, yes. You know, the dishwasher never gets loaded. But they have helped by getting the dishes to the sink. Yeah. And yet if we criticize them, we're criticizing them. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> and there's a way to refine that. Okay. You, you put them in, there's usually two sinks. You just move them into the sink on the right. See, that way it gets it away from where the faucet goes, and that just takes it a little step further. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well, see, this leads to the next one on my list, which is that women are always griping that men don't do any housework. And then when we do do the housework, they say we didn't do it right. Oh, yeah. How about that, guys? <laughs> yeah. But now, David, if you're supposed to be cleaning up the kitchen and the dishes don't make it into the dishwasher, is that really, I mean, is that really cleaning up the kitchen? I mean, it's progress from doing nothing, but still, if that's really it, now, come on, isn't that a legitimate gripe? Well, I, I personally, I'm, I'm, I'm great with the dishwasher, so I, I don't even know if, this, if I'm going to buy this whole... <laughs> if you'll take the blame for the yeah. whole uh, generation. Wait, 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 okay, let's, let's stop. Do you two get along? I mean, you work together at the post. I mean, do you, give, do you have fun with each other? I mean, what's the relationship well, there? Most of the time. <laughs> well, I'd say, I mean, professionally we do bicker, but in real life, I'd say basically we're, we're good friends. Uh, well, it's a little more complicated than that. I think Bonnie has a crush on me, but... Uh, yeah. Well, I, kind of, I mean, with all those finer points, there, though, Dave, how can There's a word this? for this. It's called delusional. Uh, <laughs> anyway... What, what you, okay, we're going to take a break, come back, because I want to ask you a couple of things about your, your readers. So we'll come back, and uh, if, if you're still aggravated, don't worry, we'll fix it. Right after. Just to any place, no matter how hard they try, what they do is they give directions based on where you turn at the stop and go, and blah, blah, blah. They don't ever give you any 
like road names or numbers. She changes her mind every five seconds. Go to bed without even saying goodnight. Well, they just get mad for no reason. You're just having a good old time, and then all of a sudden, they just get all upset, and you're just sitting there like, what did I do? What happened? Okay. <laughs> all right. So I was dancing on the table at that nice <laughs> restaurant. Your readers obviously must respond to the various mm -hmm. articles you write, but uh, I, I'm just guessing. Do you think women have a tendency to gang up on uh, men more than men do on women, as far as their feelings go? Sometimes. I mean, I'll hear from women, um, they'll, they'll leave a message in my voicemail, or they'll call, or they'll write, and they'll kind of go, right on, yeah, we're all for you. Um, whereas with men, um, sometimes the messages I get tend to be more, um, stop picking on us, leave us alone. Oh, you know? oh poor us. Oh, poor us, yeah. Dave? Uh, I do, I think women tend to be more vocal. I hear a lot from, uh, as I mentioned earlier, angry women, readers, uh, and I also get a lot of response from women who are supportive and... Go ahead. And I, just, uh, the men, I, I do think men are, as someone in the audience said, men tend to be more independent and, and maybe don't see themselves as a collective group. Is there a category, though, that really triggers people in general? I mean, is there a certain area? Like we've heard several different suggestions from housework, housework. to wandering eyes to uh, things like that, to... Uh, not, not communicating. Is there a category that really gets them? I would say up? housework is a biggie, yeah. a real big one on the list. Women don't like to have to carry the dual roles mm -hmm. as men think so often they should. Yeah, and they want men to help more. Yeah. They're very vocal about that. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right, now joining us in our audience here is uh, a writer for Single File Magazine. And this is a magazine designed to bring the two, besides their differences, put your differences aside, get together and have a nice evening. This is right. Lauren Burnick. Hi. Tell me about some of the things you highlighted in your article. Well, it's funny because uh, this month, John, my assistant, and I wrote an article, his point of view, her point of view, what annoys me about the opposite sex, so it seems to be universal. But what just cracks me up, I just can't even understand about men, is they keep their same pairs of underwear for like 20 years. <laughs> just forever. I mean... <laughs> I don't want to embarrass my husband or anything, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> too late now, Lauren, but that's okay. You know, once you tell they... him you said that, okay? A piece of elastic with a, co some cotton hanging off yeah. of it. You know? And yet, you're supposed to be Madonna right. with what you're wearing, exactly. Ben, right? So, is that why I have no feeling in my legs? <laughs> <laughs> the numbness, okay. And they also, they blame you for things they can't find, like, where'd you put my wallet? Where'd you put my car keys? Like, I'm, I have a vendetta that I'm hiding all his things or something, you know, just crazy things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just on and on and on. Uh, next month um, in the uh, magazine Single File, we're, we're devoting a whole article just to housework because it is such a, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, a hot spot. Well, I can't leave you out of this then. Oh, so You're going to have to, I mean, you know, you go second, but at least you get in. Now tell me some of your complaints. About well, uh, you know, the main one is uh, shopping. Uh, it's such, such, such a big thing of their lives. Uh, my closet space has been removed, you know. In fact, my clothes are in a pile. That's why we're messy, because we have no closet space. We have, we've taken the closet Shoes, space. robes, everything, you know. Yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah, so. that, that gets old. Well, you know, uh, Lauren, you're married, and, and we were talking before about being married 22 years. How do you do it then? I mean, with such obvious differences, what do you think the secret is to uh, a long, happy marriage? You to be great friends. Great friends. Be but I mean, do you have to just like overlook a lot? You compromise a lot. You learn to compromise a lot. What are some of the things you've compromised on? Well, I'll be married 22 years Saturday, depending on what I say today. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you learn like not to say something about his driving, although when he's kind, good natured, sweet, any other time, get him behind the wheel of a car and he turns into a caveman, you know, <laughs> a real jerk. He's got to tailgate everyone. He's got to be 10 minutes ahead of everyone. It's like we're going to a fire. And if I open my mouth and say something, well, guess what? Now we're into it, you know? Yeah. So you learn to not say something. But giving him his due, he doesn't say a lot about the things I do either. All right. Well, your list, I'm sure, is a lot shorter anyway. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Happy anniversary. <laughs> okay. Very good. Anybody else got secrets for uh, making it? I believe that you need to complement each other. You need to find out your differences because we need each other. And, and if we find out the good that each other have and realize that we're different, God made men and women different, and men can uh, balance the checkbook, save the money, take care of the future. Women will spend it all. <laughs> women will clean the house. 
women will Egg, take Whoa, it. objection from the floor over there, right, Bonnie? Oh Bonnie did a problem with that. <laughs> yeah. I think he's stereotyping a little bit here mm -hmm. on that one. Do, <laughs> let me ask the man something. Do, do you ever feel like women sort of have a maternal instinct? They want to raise you like that at the point in which they meet you, was you're not quite up to snuff yet. You just Raise you and change you. And too. change you. Well, you were nice That's to David me. That's David's crime. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, say, so, what was that? Men are always looking for the women to be their mothers. We have to find their things. We have to pick up after them. We have to provide whatever for them. <laughs> You're shaking your head no. You're shaking your head no. No, that's what they think. That's, that's they, what they think. They think. Now, you two were holding things. hands. What do you think? I think she's right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe you won't be holding hands when you leave. That's one of those what are you thinking questions, see? <laughs> we weren't thinking that. All right, we're going to take another break. Come back with more. Stay with us. Stay with us. And the men so far, I believe, are winning this argument. Oh, oh boo! <laughs> I'm sorry, did you, you were saying I wasn't paying attention? Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> but excuse me, you guys are not winning this fight. Well, I mean, it's, isn't it a matter of, you know, sort of observation, how you see things before you even try to analyze what's happened? We analyze things. Mm -hmm. It's just that you guys don't take the time to listen to us because you're off somewhere else in Netherlands. Who should kiss who first? Whoever wants to kiss who first wants to kiss. Should you ever wait for the other person to kiss you first? Nah, go for it. <laughs> do some women do that? Definitely. See? I won my point again. Oh, I to be so competitive. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, I got her going again. Okay, now, you were saying? But why is everything a competition? That's another thing. Women don't compete with their friends. Men do. They always bet. Okay, I'll, I'll bet you this right. on sports or whatever. But women, you know, nurture each other and they're friends with each There's other. There's that word, nurture. <laughs> they do things with each other. They go out, you know, they go shopping, they go to lunch. They go. Men just compete. Okay, we'll, we'll come over and we'll watch sports and I'll bet you $50 they win. Let me uh, explain their, their version of nur nurturing. Yeah, would uh, you please? They're in a re restaurant. Another woman comes in. Oh, my God. Look at what she's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. How could you best be wearing that? <laughs> I believe nurture and trashing are synonyms. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm with him at a bar. Another guy walks in. I don't care. Yeah. We just you don't, don't care, care what the guy's going on, right? I don't you know? care what he's wearing. Okay. See? Now, that's a good point. Now, you want to come back? <laughs> would you well, like to go another one? <laughs> All right. I rest my case. Judge? Judge, uh, I think that you all need to step in here about competitiveness. This is true. Whether, I mean, it, men seem to want to compete all the time. Mm -hmm. Bonnie? I, I think women do act more cooperatively mm -hmm. than men. I think men are more com are competitive. But I think that's the way um, they're raised. They come up. I mean, they're, they're, they have, do a lot of sports. Although women are participating now in sports as girls, but I think men traditionally have been more competitive because of um, just sociological reasons. Do men and women like the same music as far as when it's time to decide to go out for an evening together, away, you know, neutral territory, mm -hmm. someplace fun? Can you agree on where to go, David? I mean, in the beginning you can because it's infatuation and you like whatever he does and she likes whatever you do, but down the road a little bit when those differences, he always and she always, is it harder to agree on a fun thing to do? I think pretty much most women would like a quiet dinner and then sit back and listen to Axl Rose or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And men? Uh, no, I think uh, music, I think it's pretty much individual taste. Mm -hmm. and, and men and women can't agree on something like music. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of the few things we can agree on. Uh, <laughs> an audience member in the back here. Well, you know, you can always find... Somebody the... gave him a microphone of all things. <laughs> you can yeah. always find the strong, silent type in the back. See, they're kind of uh, watching everything right back here. Are you, you have a girlfriend? Uh, kind of, I guess you could say that. Okay. Any sort of early stage aggravation setting in? Um, yeah, she always, you know what, women never want to sit home and just relax and watch the tube. They always have to go out. 24 hours a day they have to go out. They always want to go shopping, they want to go to the mall. And the thing is, I'm only going to go to the mall if I have to buy something. Right. That's Not the reason. Right. Exactly. Not no recreation. window shopping here. Do you have a remote for your TV? Um, yeah, I do. But sometimes, I, occasionally I get up and turn the channel. Oh, what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to be flexible. <laughs> You were going to say something. I could just tell. I've been watching you now. You're just... <laughs> what do you think about men today? Is there, any, is there any pure aggravations that are undisputable? Well, I do have a problem with how we should always look great in a bathing suit. We should always have a big wardrobe. Everything should be pressed and ready. And men just naturally can look good being a little bit sloppy, a little bit scruffy, like this guy sitting next to me here. 
Which way, left or right? Left. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Have you have you known this? Uh, no, very, <laughs> have you known this one very long? Uh, not very long. Yeah. Five minutes, maybe. Five minutes. <laughs> okay. He's kind of a manly looking guy, and I got the cottons on there. You know, a little chest hair, a little beard growth. What do you think? He looks a little scruffy to me. <laughs> <laughs> now you've been working for three days, right? You've been on a triple shift. You have just got off, right? Been drinking heavily. Has no time to go home and shave. See? <laughs> what what a guy. All right, romance. Let's talk about that one. Let's talk about those uh, things, expectations. Women and men have different expectations mm -hmm. when it comes to romance. Mm -hmm. A guy's idea of something romantic would be what, David? If you wanted to try to do something, something romantic for a guy, what would it be? Lisa, I think with romance, it probably would be pretty similar again. Uh, Buy a, a, a nice crap. restaurant? No. no, come on. Now we're stereotyping. No. I think, you know, a man also would, likes a nice, quiet, romantic restaurant and walk along the beach and someone stop me please <laughs> hard for you to even verbalize this yeah, isn't well, it David? Well, shucks, oh well <laughs> Bonnie I would say women woman. like lots of romance a lot not just in the beginning but all through the marriage relationship everything not just on flowers um, right. the whole bit mm -hmm. um, romantic dinners um, oh and surprises uh, women love surprises yeah. Things they don't know about, um, like a surprise bouquet of flowers or a gift or, um, gosh, a friend of mine was telling me her husband planned a complete trip uh, for their, I think it was second or third uh, wedding anniversary and never told her a word about it and she loved it and, and all of her friends went nuts. They all thought that was great, that he was the greatest guy in the world because he surprised her with this wonderful trip. And she didn't criticize him. Right? Nope. I mean, this is no. the whole point. You say we criticize, but no. after that, she probably put the dishes away herself. Yeah, we're trying to clone them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so as long as we're planning these wonderful surprises, everything's okay. <laughs> you were going to say? Well, if you're talking about surprising, you know, I like to surprise a girl as much as the next guy, but it's just uh, kind of hard to surprise a girl when they're prying into everything. Mm. <laughs> oh. Hey, and what about, Bonnie, when yeah. you start doing all this romance, the woman says, what's going on? You know, in other words, is there something going on that you're all of a sudden so attentive and so wonderful? You have to be a good fibber, so she'll stay surprised. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Mark, go ahead. That, well, that's another stereotype, that women are always suspect or scheming, uh -huh. right? Yeah, that's there true. There you go. Yeah. David, jump in here. Ooh, yeah, a little boy. Oh, women are always yeah. scheming. On. Wait a minute, we've got, we've got, this, go ahead. got him riled up already. <laughs> All right, there you go. He, he sort of has a girlfriend, and he's already riled up. Well, women, <laughs> women are more low-key than guys. They're more secretive. They do keep secrets. Women have their secrets, you know. Mm -hmm. Guys are more open, I, I think, so I am anyway, more forward. Yeah. As far as, like, surprises go, I've surprised a significant other one saying, um, she took it back. <laughs> yeah, she took it back? Yeah. You can surprise him, but keep the receipt in the bag. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay. Well, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. To our audience, always ask the best questions. We applaud you. Single Ball Magazine, we talked about uh, Lauren Burnick. Uh, we can put that up and, and tell you how you can get that. And also, a very big thank you to Bonnie Gangelhoff and David Kaplan with the Houston Post. It's been a lot thank of you. fun. And really and truly, how do you two get along in the office with so many differences here? David, you want to take it? <laughs> no, we're friends. <laughs> And she has a crush on him. She that. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a short break again. Thanks, everybody. And back with Kids and Values. So stay with us. Hard to get together on. But there are some things you're on, and that is teaching your kids values. So today, in part two of our series, we're going to be talking about how to teach your child to stand on their own two feet and be self-reliant, and also how to make peace with those inevitable sibling rivalries. You're dead meat, little creep. You got two.